There probably isn't a martial artist today that has not heard the name Bill Superfoot Wallace. An impressive martial artist, Mr. Wallace is a professional karate association world full contact karate champion. Known for his incredible speed, including his lightning fast kick, Mr. Wallace is a well-respected name in the martial arts community, and he was amazing enough to talk with us recently about his life and experience in the martial arts. My high school career, my wrestling, I was, a, I was an eighth grader. And my father was a football coach, a high school basketball coach, and so forth. So when I was seventh, eighth grade, I played high school basketball or junior high basketball uh, because my dad was a coach. I was about five six, five seven, weighed eighty nine pounds. I'm from Indiana, basketball state. So I played the game. I get into high school my freshman year. I figure, well, I haven't gotten any ball, any taller. I haven't gotten any bigger. I haven't gotten any heavier. I weighed 89 pounds as a freshman in high school. So I was the long snapper on the freshman football team. You know what the long snapper is? The guy that centers it back to the punter or the place it down. Only reason I was the long snapper because I was stupid enough to keep my head down and snap the ball back. And I got creamed every time. There was no three second rule, you know, in high school where you gotta wait three seconds before you cream the guy. Well, I got creamed right all day. I got nailed. And then I, after the football season was over, I said, well, number one, I'm too short for basketball. I'm not going to ever make the basketball team. I'm walking down the hallway and I see these guys in this room wrestling around. And I said, I'm walking, what are you guys doing? He says, we're wrestling. And I went, wow. I talked to the coach, his name was Dr. Uh, Mr. Clausen. And I went, wow. And he says, you're a lightweight, right? I said, yeah. yeah. So I started wrestling my freshman year because it was, it was the only thing to do. At my size, it was the only thing to do. And I, my freshman year, I weighed 89 pounds, like I said. I wrestled. The, low, the lightest weight they had was 95 pounds. I weighed 89 pounds. So I would weigh in with all my clothes on, make everybody mad. And then I gained, we gained a little weight. I weighed 130 pounds as a senior in high school. I turned sides and stuck out my tongue. I looked like a zipper. When I, when I got out of this, I got out of, graduated high school, uh, my friend talked me into joining the service. I joined the Air Force. So I get to my permanent station. I want to continue wrestling because it was my little, my first love. So I get over, I go over to the men's gym and I talk to the front desk. I says, do they have a wrestling team on base? He says, well, I don't know what they're doing, but a bunch of guys rolling around in the back room. So I walk in the back room, there's guys looking these little white coats on and white pants around, throwing each other all over the place. I said, excuse me, I was a 17 year old upstart. I said, excuse me, excuse me. And the guy says, yeah, can I help you? And I said, yeah, anybody in here wrestle? He says, you wrestle? I said, yes, sir. He says, I'll wrestle. So he takes the little white coat off and we wrestle. I take him down three or four times, put him on his back a couple times. He said, that's pretty good. I said, well, thank you. He says, now put this little white coat on. So I put this little white coat on and he says, now we're going to wrestle again. <laughs> flunk, flunk, I'm going to flunk. Yeah, I bounced off the walls. I bounced off the ceiling. And I went, what is this called? He says, it's called judo. And I went, wow, 1963. So I said, wow, this sounds like a lot of fun. So I started playing judo. And from judo, 1966, I tear my knee up. I'm representing the Air Force with the United States team. I tear my knee up and I'm in a cast from here, from my crotch down to my ankle because of the knee. There was no such thing as arthroscopic surgery back then. It was called exploratory. Anyway, so what happened then is I get out, I'm in a cast. A friend says, hey, there's a karate school downtown. Let's go check it out. That's all I need to say. I, I, I'm in a cast. The guy said, oh, you do karate. I said, what? He said, you do karate. Get, my friend says, do you want to do karate? I said, sure, why not? He says, oh, you stand up. I said, I have a cast I can't kick. He says, no problem, you stand up. So I stood up there. Right off the bat, I'm doing side kicks. Doing side kicks, doing side kicks. I leave, come back about a week later. He says, oh, very good, you're back, you're back. Now do a roundhouse kick. Well, why is he getting it? Roundhouse kick it. Okay, so I started doing a roundhouse kick, and that's where my kicking came from, primarily from in a leg cast, can't do anything, so I just stand there throwing kicks, and got out of the cast, started training. Uh, I, fought, I defended my title in 1976 in Las Vegas against a fighter named Jimmy Colas, and uh, I knocked him out with a kick, a roundhouse kick to the head, and 
They said it was so fast that nobody could see it. They played it, it was live CBS Sports Spectacular. So they played it back and back, different angles. Finally, from one angle, they saw where the kick hit him and knocked him out. And the president of the PK at the time, a guy named Don Quine, was at a Lakers basketball game. And he's back to the concession stand, he sees a sign that says, super foot long hot dogs. That's where the super foot came from. I would rather be the whole thing, but you know, I wanted to be super foot long, but. I, I teach snap, speed, quickness. You know, when, when I throw a punch, most people back. But I want to snap out, I want to snap back. I found out my, my, my college career, my undergraduate career, that the guys want to find out why I was fast. The college professionals wanted to find out why Bill Wallace, this little white guy, is fast. And I found out, they found out that when I worked my movement, they would film it and work, work my movement. The agonistic muscle group is a muscle group doing the work. The antagonistic muscle group is a muscle group that kind of fights against that work. They found out when I would do a technique like a back fist, <clears throat> the antagonistic muscle group would be the tricep, is very relaxed. So all the movement comes from the agonistic muscle group. So th there's nothing inhibiting the speed. And that's why it snaps out and back every time. I hope. Mr. Wallace was also close friends with another legendary martial artist, Joe Lewis, and he now runs the Superfoot Joe Lewis Systems. What it is, is, is Joe Lewis, ironically enough, we found this out in 1960 when Joe was already champion. We were the same system. He was in Okinawa at the same time, out with a year and a half before I was in Okinawa. We had the same instructor, same school, Shorin Ru Karate in Okinawa, Naha City. So we became friends from 1968 on. We were on the same team together. We fought each other, we sparred each other. And uh, when Joe died, his, his system kind of promoted me to the highest rank. So I'm thinking, well, okay, they want, they want me to take over the system because I'm still alive. So we started working together with the Joe Lewis people, started working together with his people, my people, so we're kind of an integration, you might say, between the system, because I'm a kicker, and I teach a lot of kicking. Where Joe was a power guy. I weigh 165 pounds, who am I gonna hurt? But just maybe, you know, I get you to walk into it, so that helps. But, uh, so it's integrating of, the, of Joe Lewis's fighting system with the super fighting system, and, and just the ideas. It's not to make anybody one or the other, it's to integrate, keep Joe's name alive, along with Superfoot and because we were we were showing new people together and and it seems to be doing great people are with us 100 percent we did we did 1990 no it was it was we had a blast we had a blast uh we fought in lake tahoe pay-per-view it was the third highest ranking uh show that that year the only thing that beat us was two concerts so that tells you anything. But anyway, yeah, I, mean, I make a joke about it. Joe and I fought great. We had a great time. He beat the, beat the crap out of each other. And the funny thing is, I tell this to everybody, and if, you know, when people say, well, this kick will knock him out, or this kick will kill him, or this kick will do this, or this, this punch will, I hit Joe with probably one of the best hook kicks I've ever thrown in my life. I thought, oh my God, I've killed him. He bats him and goes, ow. I went, oh shit. So, you know, you, all you can do is throw it. You don't know what's going to happen. You can just throw it and hope for the best. Well, Century uh, covers, uh, carries the videos now. Uh, when Panther was alive, around it back in the 80s and 90s, I did, uh, I did 10 videos for Panther Productions. Since that time, Century has bought those videos. Then I've done 10 more for Century. So they're, on, they're at the Century under video. But training videos on flexibility, uh, kicking, working on speed, working on combinations, work on movement. The older you get, the sneaker you have to get. Mr. Wallace has also made several film appearances, often appearing opposite of Jackie Chan and Chuck Norris. It was always fun watching him in his movie roles, even though martial arts and film aren't quite the same as they are in real life. Well, wh whatever you see in, in, on film, don't believe it. It's not true. Uh, the fight scenes I did, I did a film with Jackie Chan, I did a film with Chuck Norris, uh, did, did several films with uh, uh, different people and so forth, did 15 films. Uh, I die good, I'm one of the better dyers. 
Uh, the, the problem, the, the problem with with the fight scenes is, people go to those go to those movies, they see the fight scenes, and they think that's what karate is. So they go to a karate school, and they sign up for karate school, and they sit there for the first six weeks going, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, one leg, oh yeah, oh yeah, one leg, oh yeah, oh yeah, and they don't understand it. You have to learn the basic movement. You have to learn the balances, the, the strength, the weaknesses, the, the flexibilities, and so forth. It just doesn't come overnight, you know. And but the problem is, you know, if you look at it in the Oriental philosophy, in the Asian philosophy, how long do you have to learn something? Your entire life, you know. An Asian will say, "Well, I got forever to learn this thing." An American will give you three weeks. And if I don't learn everything in three weeks, I'm done. I'm out of here. When I when I started, it was very hardcore. Everything was power. The reverse punches were as strong as you could throw it. The kicking techniques were as strong as you could throw it. The sparring, you know, I remember sparring. Uh, if you hit a guy and knocked him down, good point, good point. Or you know, you practice game or control. Uh, you hit a guy. I used to go to Texas and fight. You hit a guy in the mouth, knock him out. They give you like a minute to wake up. If you didn't wake up, you still won. I go, whoa. This is a lot of fun, and I'm 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 from the Midwest. My my parents were fairly affluent, right? So I never got in fights, and all of a sudden now I go down to Texas fighting this match, where the guy says I'm going to kill you. Okay, I don't think so, but you know. Try it uh, in the Campo system. You know, it's it's it's. Kempo, the Kempo system is primarily a self-defense. So where, uh, for a smaller person, slight, you know, because of the speed involved and the movement involved. Uh, you got the tall, lankier guy, my good taekwondo because of the kicking aspect, the flexibility aspect, and so forth. You got the bulky guy, the strong guy, Shodokan Karate, which is a very strong, straightforward backup movement. So, and then, then you've got the, the wrestler, that might go with the jujitsu part of it, the, the judo part of it. You know, the guys, those guys, I mean, my hat goes off to those guys because those guys take a beating. Just in training, they take a beating. And then go out and do it for 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 for, for real and then say it's fun. Because we did it back in the old days, you know. I mean, point turners back in the early, mid-60s were MMA matches because you could throw a guy, you could take him down, you could trip him, sweep him, and we fought on concrete floors. So it was still the same thing. You could step on them. Now I do get a lot of comments and stories from our viewers, many of whom have encountered obstacles in their life that's either delayed their training or prevented it altogether. There's always going to be some moments in life that stand in our way. And Mr. Wallace shared some advice on how important it is to just keep pushing forward and go past that if you can. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. I'm 73 years old. I understand. I have a master's degree in kinesiology and physiology of exercise. I understand if I quit, I die. Uh, that's your body. You know, your body's used to doing something in a certain way and doing something with the heart, with the, with the, you know, the lungs, the cardiovascular and so forth. And when you quit, everything slows down. You become sedentary and you just don't do it anymore. And then you just shrivel up and die. But yeah, train, I'll be doing this till I croak, you know, because it's still fun kicking people. Love kicking people. I first met Mr. Wallace at a seminar in 1996. He came to our school and it was a really fun night. I was one of the students he picked out for demonstration and I'll never forget the experience. He stood me in front of the room, had me go into a fighting stance, and he asked me to try to block his kick when I saw him move. So I waited, I was ready. Suddenly I noticed my belt flick and I stood there waiting for him to throw the kick before it dawned on me that he already had. So that was a real wake up call to realize that I had a long way to go in my own training. But it was a really valuable experience, and it was really cool to see somebody who was as accomplished as he was as a fighter professionally, that he was taking the time to teach and share his experience and knowledge with other students. I did, I was doing seminars that I was competing, you know. It, it, you have to understand that I started competing in 1966. And, and the whole thing was sparring. All I wanted to do was spar. I wanted to learn technique, I want to see if it spars. And I did it. So, you know, for 50 from years, yeah, I've been I've been doing so I'm sparring. And pretty soon he just got old. I said, I don't want to do this anymore. And especially with the reputation I had, if you and I spar and I hit you, I'm a bully. But if I don't hit you, I'm no good. So 
you know, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. So the teaching part is fine. Just like you said, I'll throw the kick, you block it. And But now it's fun teaching other people how to work the speed, how to work the agility, how to work the flexibility and so forth. So it, it, I get much more enjoyment out of this. But it's still fun kicking people. It's getting the, it's getting the idea across. You have to be able to not teach a technique, not teach a movement, but teach an idea. And the idea, because no two people are built the same, there's three of us here. We're not built the same. We have different strengths, we have different weaknesses, different flexibilities. But most important, we're different right here psychologically. You're not going to think about it the same way I think about it. He's not going to think about it the way. I'm going to be different too. So what happens is, as a teacher, that teacher has to work towards you, work towards me, work towards him. To where you can understand the same movement, the same technique. But there's going to be different attitudes. That's why there's, when I first started, came back to the United States, there were basically four karate systems. Shotokan, Gojiru, Shorinru, and Shoreru. That was it. But because you and I don't agree on something, you're going to go over here, and I taught you, and I taught you, you know, Bill Wallace system, right? But you go next door because you can't do it when I do it. Now you're going to teach the Wally Roo system. Which is okay. It's just a different way to do it. Look at look at our sports, our basketball, our football. Ba football coaches get fired every year. Basketball coaches get fired every year. Get hired by somebody else, and they win a national championship. It's how you make it work for you. How do you make it? How you get it across to the other individuals? You know, I would like to see a little less bickering. You know, a little more getting along, but you know, as long as there's—I mean, the nations now don't even get along. So if if you're Shorin Ru, which is Okinawan system, Shotokan people don't like you, which is kind of silly because Shotokan was taken from Shorin Ru, and now you guys don't like the Koreans because they do it all together different than you do. And then the Chinese, all this flowing stuff never works. Well, dead for them. So you have to, you know, you have to just kind of take everything with a grain of salt. I, I try to get along with everything. Whatever you do might work. Whatever I do might work, you know? Uh, and the only way you can find out is if you try it. Uh, because of my wrestling background, I was a scissor man. I used my legs to do take downs, I used my legs to do rides and things like this. So when I started, same thing with the judo throws. I used my legs to do throws, uchimata, right, goshi, hani, goshi. You know, different throws using the legs. So when I got into martial arts, the karate aspect, I wanted to kick. I wanted to do the side kick, the round kick, the hook kicks, the spinning kick, but I can't because of my knee. So, so you know, you, you take what you want to learn and play with it. You know, we're all influenced by by our movements. We're all influenced by our friends, our parents, uh, where we are. You understand? I was in Okinawa, so. They're short and rude, <laughs> and that's it. In our sport, in our art, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different techniques. Some are designed for you, some are designed for me, some are designed for your cameraman. Our job, going through the arts and so forth, is decide and work on the ones that work for us. I mean, of all the, I've been doing this for almost 60 years. I have five weapons. I have five techniques I use. A side kick, a round kick, a hook kick, a, a, a back fist, and a hook punch. That's it. But I got those down pretty good. <laughs> and as, as we work it, I'll find different ways of working it. And maybe I find out in my old age, something else feels pretty good. Hey, wow, I like this. Maybe I'll work it. But right now, I'm really good left side forward. Left leg, left hand. And that works well for me, especially when I teach it in common in, in seminars and competitions and things like this, to where the people can say, hey, wow, I like the way you did this. And all, all our job is to do is to feed ideas. Punch is a punch and a kick is a kick. And how you do it is no different than the way I do it. Except you're bigger than me. You're heavier than I am. Stronger than I am. But just maybe, just maybe, I'm a little quicker than you are. So maybe I get you to walk into something. And that and that's where it all comes into, you know. I do seminars all over the way through and I say, well, what does this sidekick do? It says, oh, it knocks the wind out of people. Not always. Sometimes it might just knock you back a little bit so I'm safe. Sometimes if you charge in, it knocks me back so I'm safe. Sometimes I use it as a, as a, as a setup. 
So it's not designed to knock the wind out of you. Maybe, maybe not. I don't ever know. Fun. Have a good time. Because if you have a good time, you'll come back. If you have a good time, you'll have positive thoughts. If you didn't have a good time, you say, well, I didn't like this, or I didn't like this. So, you know, it all becomes an aid. But most important is have a good time. If you couldn't tell when I was doing my seminar, I have a blast. I learn just as much as the people do because I'm going to keep doing it until I do it right. It was a true honor and privilege to have Mr. Wallace take the time for an interview. Meeting him now again is no less impressive than it was the first time. A true competitor and martial artist. Thank you, sir. Just keep kicking. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And if you want to see more interviews, please let me know in the comments. Please like this video and share Mr. Wallace's advice with as many people as possible.